All right, hello, welcome to the Northland. So today, not car related, still engine related though. So this will be a little bit of maybe self-help. Um, I know a lot of you guys are probably pretty good at this and this will be nothing new. For those that may be not so mechanically inclined or maybe you're in a pinch and you need something fixed right away but and, and don't have the time to wait, this will be a perfect video for you. Um, let me flip you around, I'll explain what I got. A Craftsman pressure washer. This thing's only maybe two years old and I've had nothing but problems with it. Um, the first year was probably my fault, it was the pump that went out and I, uh, I don't think I um, winterized the pump uh, either either not good or not at all I don't recall um, and I had left it in my shed and I think it froze and so the pump quit working um, <clears throat> I did get that repaired but now this year I haven't used it yet this year it's it's um, like about just about the last week of October I was going to pressure wash the house and I took the pressure washer out and won't start I suspect I know what the problem is we'll see um, I'm sorry I didn't catch that on video. It didn't even dawn on me, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to bring it in and do something that I hope will work. And if it does, then great. You'll be able to see it. So here so we go. this is, again, a Craftsman pressure washer. The uh, engine is a Honda GCV 200. It's a 3,300 PSI, 2.4-gallon-per-minute uh, gas-powered pressure washer. So... First thing to do, obvious, well, I say it's obvious, but turn off the fuel, okay? The fuel valve should be located on the left side of the engine. Um, and this could go for lawnmowers too. These engines are not just on pressure washers. So uh, they put them on lawnmowers, for example. Um, I don't know, I'm sure there's a whole host of things. Um, maybe tillers or something, I don't know. Anyway, if you have an engine like this, the basic layout is going to be pretty much the same. So step two then would be if you have old fuel in it, if you have not drained it, would be to dump the gas out. Just tip it over, dump the fuel out. I'm not going to do that because this was just purchased from the gas station. It is brand new fuel. I know the gas tank itself was clean, so I'm not even going to mess with that. Okay. Next step after that will be to remove this soap tank. Uh, there's two Allen screws, one on each side located here, and let me go get those and I can hopefully tell you what size that is. Okay, so it's either a four or four and a half millimeter. I can't, I'm trying to read what that is, and I can't read it even with my glasses on and uh, it's not focusing real well. Anyway, four or four and a half millimeter. So we'll remove this soap tank and then we'll go to the so next So I step. said remove soap tank. Actually, you don't need to remove it completely. I left it attached to the hose. You just want to take these screws off and so that it's loose so that you can take it off and move it out of the way. Next step will be to open up this bolt. I believe that's a 10 millimeter. I'll verify. And we're going to, this is the fuel bowl on the carburetor. So we're going to Use the bowl and we're going to loosen this screw. We're going to let the fuel drain out of the carburetor. Yes, it is a 10 millimeter. There we go. We're going to, I'm going to go grab a pair of gloves. Hold on. All right. We're going to, there shouldn't be a lot in there, but obviously you don't want to make a mess. So. Oh, now it's coming out. So you'll probably end up with a couple of tablespoons of fuel anyway. And then we'll just remove the bowl. Sometimes the gasket will come off with the bowl itself, and sometimes it'll stay on there. So just make sure that if it comes off with the bowl, or even if it doesn't, um, just make sure you don't lose it. Now, this doesn't look 
too dirty, we're gonna go ahead and wipe it out. To use a small standard screwdriver, and I don't know if I'll be able to get a shot of this. Let's see if we can look up under here. Um, see that stem right there? Let's see if I can point it out to make sure. Right there, there's a jet. It's called a jet, anyway. A uh, little brass fitting that's up inside there. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to... Anyway. You're just all you're going to do is you're going to stick your screwdriver up in there. It's got a it's kind of slotted and it should just unscrew. So don't be a bull in a china shop. You don't want to strip it out or lose it. And then uh, I'll show you what we'll do next. All right, so that's what it looks like. It's slotted on the end of it for a screwdriver. And then the other end. So usually what happens is that little hole in there that allows fuel to go through is usually plugged. Now, there's also that little stem that fell out. Sometimes it'll fall out, sometimes it won't. If it doesn't fall out, you'll want to try and get this out. Um, just usually gently tapping on the side of the engine will be enough to make it fall out. But this also, if I can get it to, let me see if I can get it to focus here. See, it has little holes on it. It has four on this side and four on this side. It also has a larger hole here and one that goes through the center. We're going to use a, since I needed two hands, uh, I'm trying to be creative. I know the camera's a little high, but, so I'm gonna use a twist tie first, and we're just going to feed it through these larger holes. Where's my camera? There we go. So we're gonna start with the bigger hole here first. Just work it through there, make sure it's clean. And then, gently feed it through the middle of the tube. And it may not go all the way, which is fine. Just uh, attack it from both ends. Um, Usually that is not where the clog is, but I figure since we're going to have it out, may as well clean it out anyway. All right. So next we're going to grab a small piece of wood. When I say small, I mean small. This is one strand. You probably can't even see the strand sticking out across my forehead there. Let me see if I can see it. That single strand right there. That's what we're going to poke in these little holes. The, I'm telling you, these holes are so small that anything bigger than that isn't going to go. So we're going to just poke each one of these eight holes. There's two on top, two on bottom on both sides. Uh, make sure there's no obstructions. And after we get done with that, we're going to do the main jet as well. That same piece of wire. You can maybe use something a little bit bigger for this, but again, the hole uh, that goes through here is not very large, and this isn't very big. The wire should go straight through, um, and if it doesn't, then you probably have a larger obstruction in there um, than you realized. So, all right, so that's done. One other thing I'll do is I'm gonna use a toothbrush. This may be a little bit of overkill, but again, I hate to disassemble something, put it back together, and find out I missed something. Um, again, just be a gentle, gentle. The object, for me anyway, is just hopefully some of these bristles will get in these little holes in case I miss something with that small wire. If it happens to be stuck to the side of the hole and uh, the wire just kind of went around it, then hopefully the uh, nylon bristle will poke it free. Um, I strongly suggest against using any kind of compressed air. These parts are not very big. This is probably the largest, but if you lose either one of these, you're going to be in big, you're going to have problems. So don't use any compressed air. If you need to blow, out, blow it out, either 
use your mouth, blow it out that way, or use a can of the air duster for like electronics. Okay, now we're gonna assemble, reassemble in reverse order. Stem goes in first. Um, you'll notice that it has a long end and a short end. Long end goes into the carburetor first, and then the jet goes in with the screwdriver, so a little, little, easy for me to say, screwdriver portion of it facing down or out or however. Some people will lay it on the side. I happen to find it easier to put it on the table. So you may have to hold the stem in until you get the jet in and started. Um, but sometimes, again, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you'll, you poke it up there, it'll stay. So we're going to go ahead and do that now, and I'm going to need two hands. All right, so I've got it back in there. Now keep in mind, these are brass fittings, and the carburetor itself is an aluminum. Aluminum. See, I can't talk today. Aluminum. So, again, don't be a bull in a china shop. It'd be easy to strip out. All it needs to do is be snug. This isn't like, uh, you know, a water line under pressure or anything like that. So, just snug is all you need. Next up, we're going to put the fuel bowl back in. I wiped it out. Gasket is still up there. There's also a little gasket on this uh, 10 millimeter bolt that goes into the bottom of it. So make sure all your gaskets are in place um, before you um, reassemble and turn the fuel on. With the carburetor jet, you do not need to be He-Man putting this. <laughs> I'm gonna need two hands, I think. Hold on. So again, it just needs to be snug. All right, now before we reinstall the soap tank, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn the fuel on and make sure we don't have any leaks. And if there's gonna be a leak, it should uh, manifest itself in short order. So I don't, uh, I don't see any drips. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reinstall this soap tank. And turn the we'll water on, full blast. And then, let's flip you around again here. We're going to release any pressure, make sure we have water coming out. All right, now this particular model anyway does not have a choke, does not have a throttle or anything like that. It's all automatic. So if yours has, you know, a choke or anything, make sure you choke or whatever you need to do to make it start. So, all right, let's see if we can make this happen. So, and as you know, like with pressure washers, you got to make sure it's hooked up to water before you start it. So we just connected the water hose. We connected the high pressure line. Now we're going to put the wand together. Fuel on. Again, make sure we got water. All right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope uh, if you ever need to, that'll help you out. Like I said, nine times out of 10, if a small engine like this doesn't start, it's usually fuel related. Um, and it usually has to do with the jet or something like that inside the carburetor, uh, old fuel, whatever. If that doesn't fix it, pull the spark plug, make sure you have spark. Um, but there really isn't a whole lot to these to make them complicated. Um, so again, have at it. Uh, just about anybody I think could do this if they needed to. 
All right, smash that like and subscribe. Even if you did not like the video, smash it with whatever you have handy. I'd appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button and tap the little bell at the bottom uh, whenever, so you, you'll know whenever I upload a new video. Share it with anybody you think may have an interest, and even if you don't think they'll have an interest, share it with them anyway. You never know, they might learn something. All right, thank you for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you all in the next video.